Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder video. I want to do something different. We have pretty much all of the toughest optional encounters, including boss battles of chapter 1 on Unfair, such as the large water elemental, the Nabasu the Vrock, the Brimorak the Succubus, and the battle with Minago herself. And all of these will be done with just around level 5 characters, without any mythic power, way before we would be able to get powerful domain abilities and also mostly without any character in the party to provide fortune hacks and cheesily extend it through Keiko or Chant. And speaking about party members, this is the party I've used for this run, which is my Aeon run by the way. We have a Divine Hound main character, Scylla as a pure paladin, a cleric, because at this point, chapter 1, we can't get Social who only comes at you, a Squad Mercenary, a must-have for Unfair, and I explain all about it in my recently released Squad Guide for the Enhanced Edition. Lan as a Divine Hound. This was back then, I mean, nowadays I would just have replaced it for Demon Slayer. And you can certainly have Camellia instead of him here, or Amber, to provide hexes if you prefer. And lastly, a Wizard for Haste at level 5, and some nice crawled controls such as Selective Grease, and Heightened Glitter Dust, which will come in handy in some of these battles early on. Plus, we also have 4 trusty pets to not only tank for us, but also provide a lot of extra attacks, damage, and even crowd control. I don't have the Leopard here, which to be fair is the best early game pet for Unfair, as I wanted to see how the dog could handle all of these threats. Now let's go for the best buffs to have on our characters before getting to the actual battles. We don't have many, but the ones we have still make a big difference. Most importantly, enlarge person. Most importantly, enlarge person. Plus, 4 plus 1 morale to AB. Both strength for 2 extra attack bonus and higher damage. Prayer for yet more AB and damage roll boosts. Heroism, of course. Our amazing Scald Inspired Rage. With both Animal Fury, Lethal Stance and Lesser Beast Totem. And lastly, the ever so useful Haste which truly makes a massive difference so early, which is why I have a level 5 wizard here. As far as weapons, mostly rich weapons for all my characters. The Marching Terror Glaive, the Dark Horn Glaive as well, which is already called Iron, the Decimation Bardish, also called Iron, Finion as a Bardish, called Iron once again, and lastly I just have a normal Masterwork Bardish here. Don't forget the highly useful Blast Weapon spell from Scylla as well, to grant your allies weapons, including pets, the good aligned property, also the lifesaver benefit of automatically confirming critical hits. Now I want to cover some other powerful buffs and also consumables that will save your life early on and are a must have for almost all of these battles. Now some important scrolls are, and these are all from the Cleric of the Tavern, 5 Blast Weapon, Resist Fire and Protection from Fire Communal, for the Brimorak, Resist Cold Communal for the Shadow Demon, then 6 Freedom of Movement and 1 Death Ward for the Nabasu. Don't forget the Barkeep at the Tavern also sells some pretty powerful potions. Most importantly, 8 Blast Weapons and 5 Align Weapon Good to help you bypass Demon's Physical Reduction. Displacement Pots can also help for some of these demons, at least for your main tank. Don't forget Heroism Potions too. For higher AB as early game, your Scald and Wizard won't have enough slots to buff everyone with Heroism, and this is super long-lasting. So with just these potions at the marketplace, you can basically complete all of the optional encounters there. Now for the Nabasu battle, it is paramount that all of your six humanoid party members have freedom of movement, pre-buffed. Because as soon as battle starts, the Nabas will cast Mass Hold Person, which hits a massive area. It will certainly be enough to hit all of your party members, no matter how far away they are from each other, and can paralyze them for up to one minute, which is a death sentence, obviously. While it will not affect pets because they are animals, not humanoids, the Nabasu is actually smart enough to cast it right at your human party members. Because the Nabasu will spawn right here, close to these corpses, the same place at the marketplace where you fought the Necromancer before, I like sending a pet to draw its attention first. Buster, the dog right here, which is my cleric's pet. This pet in particular should have the Death Ward buff to prevent level drain from the Nabasu. Have the rest of your party wait at the back first and let's spawn the Nabasu. Right, so it's already here. Let's wait until battle starts. And there we go. Of course, we are on unfair. The Nabasu actually has two level drain abilities. The first is Death Stealing Gaze, which is the most annoying one. He'll always cast this at the start of battle. It's a free action and it hits 
are pretty wide areas surrounding him, which is why we sent just our dog with Death Ward here, so it won't affect all of our party members. He most likely will also use Enervation against the first target, but our dog will also be immune to it thanks to Death Ward. Now let's just wait for the Nabasu to spend his Death Stealing Gaze. Right, so he already used it, you can see because of this dark cloud that surrounds him. And he's actually smart enough to move for our characters to cast Mass Hold Person right here. Which is why I said, you do need freedom of movement. Anyways, now we can actually proceed to attack. Since we have characters with Judgment, let's activate Judgment Justice with our Divine Hound and also Lun. Our dog can already start attacking. Scylla will go for Smite Evil, of course. Sadly, we are so many levels away from Mark of Justice but it will at least empower her own attacks. Everyone else can mostly just attack, Do not hold back. including the pets. And you might as well turn artificial intelligence back on, since you can all move just fine. Now, if you have a caster, well, you can try to use Glitter Dust to blind the Nabasu. Chances are he'll make the save because he has 15 will and we only have a 20 DC. I mean, it can work. You might as well give it a try. 20% is still good enough. Also, notice that some ghouls will start spawning here, but they'll mostly focus on your pets, so it's not really an issue. Anyways, Scylla already got her smite evil. Lun might as well go for perfect strike when he can. And let's try to cast Glitter Dust somewhere around here so it won't hit our allies. Yeah, so the Nabas was saved, which was expected. <laughs> We already started hitting, we actually got exactly what we needed with our Scald with Finian. Oh, Scylla also hit, thankfully. As you can see, she has amazing attack bonus, just at level 5. A 27 modifier, which means she doesn't actually have to roll that high to hit the Nabasu 33 armor class on Unfair. All thanks to the many buffs we have stacked on her. As I said, this is just level 5, without any domain powers or fortune hacks or mythic abilities. Our main character actually hasn't rolled yet, which is why he's stuck at the back here. He hasn't activated judgment. Right, so we finally can attack for our main character. Most of your hits will end up missing, but both your main character and Scylla, if they are melee characters, should be able to hit the Nabasu just fine. <laughs> so, he actually died already. And that's why Blast Weapon is so powerful. Scylla got a lucky critical hit, which only occurs on a 20, but because of Blast Weapon, it was automatically confirmed, dealing a massive 74 damage to the Nabasu before our main character was even able to attack. So if you're wondering why I say Scylla is so useful, and one of my favorite party members, well, this is why. Now you'll have to deal with some of ghouls that spawn here. They can be nasty because it is unfair, but they have pretty low armor class. Just remember to send your pets first, because if they hit your other characters, they can end up taking a lot of damage. Something you can do is cast Selective Grease to increase the chances of them being knocked down and crowd controlled, as small ghouls will start spawning. This is why I recommend you have auto pause enemy sighted or enemy spotted. One of them got greased. Now, another one spawned right at the back here, and there's one more there. The good thing is they die pretty fast, not like the Nabasu, which is tough. One more coming from this side, and another one there. And one more here, let's draw Lun away from them. We might as well drop another Grease too. Our Cleric's dog actually fell, it can happen. Might as well send this one here. It already died. <laughs> Both of the ghouls actually got greased. Greased for the win. And there we go. Alright, now let's handle what's probably the second most annoying optional encounter of Chapter 1 besides the Nabasu. The marketplace Vrock. He actually has even higher armor class than the Nabasu. And while he doesn't have annoying mass hold person or level drain, he has the spore ability, which can result in a lot of party wide damage early game. But most importantly, mirror image and the worst of all, stunning screech. Even if it only uses it once, Chances are it's going to hit all of your party members and stun them for around one round. At the very least, it doesn't last nowhere near as long as Mass Hold Person. The good thing is, unlike the Nabasu, the Vrock does let you ambush it. If you've watched my beginner's tips guide, especially for Unfair, then you already know what we're going to do. We want to charge with every one of our melee characters before battle has started to get an alpha strike. So let's do just that. I would just not charge with my wizard here 
So we can try to get some glitter dust going, even if the chances are low. We already got some hits, thankfully, because we were able to catch the Vrock flat-footed with this ambush. Now remember, we still have to use some abilities at the start of battle, like Judgment, but most importantly, Silas Might Evil. Contemplate on your mistakes. So it already started by casting Spores. What you want to do now is use your Cleric to cast Bless, because this will remove the Spores. Otherwise, they'll start dealing lots and lots of damage, because it is an unfair. Amusingly enough, we actually dealt one constitution damage to the Vrock because of a lucky critical hit with the Decimation Bardish. Ted is now gone into Mirror Image, and most likely is going to cast Stunning Screech. But I think we can prevail, let's see. So it's 100% going for Stunning Screech now. You could potentially move your allies away, but the range is so big that I don't think it's worth it. Might as well just take the pain. Thankfully, we just removed the spores. You can see the damage stacks are very annoying, so now our cleric will be on healing duty. Yeah, so stunning screech just hit, there's not much you can do about it. The DC is just super high. Thankfully, it's just a single round. Tally the Vrock just killed one of our dogs because it was still stunned. And there we go, the Vrock is gone. <laughs> Alright, now let's face the Brimorak, the Pyromaniac Demon. There is actually a choke point, a door, way here that you can use, I just find it annoying because I have so many characters and not all of them have reach, but it's something that you can take advantage of if you prefer. I'd rather just send everyone here. Now something that's super important for this battle is have both resist fire and also protection from fire communal. It will make a huge difference because on unfair you'll take double damage and the Brimorak will spam Fireball as his first action. Resist will not be enough to prevent the damage. <laughs> right, so battle has already started. I actually forgot to turn Cleave off. Since we have haste, it's detrimental. First, go for the Abricandulus. There's also some Dretchers here, but they aren't really powerful. And there we are, the Brimorak will spawn at the back. He doesn't really have strong stats, not like the Vrock and the Nabasu. Around half the hit points and only 26 AC on Unfair. The main problem is, of course, his... Alpha Strike Fireball. It can be a bit troublesome trying to get to the Brimorak because of the narrow corridor here. This is why my characters have both enlarged person and also reach weapons. Right, so the Brimorak has already used his Fireball. Amusingly enough, the Brimorak will actually damage his own allies with the Fireball because demons are not immune to fire besides Brimorak and Baylor's. So he actually killed the Dretches, I think. The Fireball actually dealt zero damage to all of our party members, which is huge. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a Lightning Trap here, which can deal nasty damage on Unfair if you don't have resist energy. Well, actually, since the trap is, like, just at this part here, we can rush for the Bimorak with our melee characters. So might as well manually move your pets to where the Bimorak is. Our enlarged characters all have reach, You've they can just the attack from mountain. far away. It's just the pets I'm worried about triggering the trap by mistake with the artificial intelligence. Okay, but it looks like everyone is just moving properly. The inheritor, guide my blade. Oops, still like kinda almost the triggered the trap, I think. Hopefully it doesn't happen. But yeah, this should be it. Oh my god, we are almost triggered the trap. That's the problem with artificial intelligence, they'll just move. Just a little more. Yeah, I ended up triggering the trap. <laughs> it's what happens when you leave it to AI. But anyways, we all still survive, thankfully, and the Brimorak is now dead. Alright, now let's cover the Shadow Demon. I'm pretty sure it starts invisible down the basement here, which means it can ambush you, somewhat annoying. To me, it usually spawns here, but I think that can change. I stand ready. This will be quick. Okay, so there we are. It spawned here, as I expected. Now... Almost all my human characters have reach, which means I'll just move them back a bit to attack since they don't need to be as close to the Shadow Demon. We don't want them getting hit, only the pets. Now, for this battle, it's absolutely paramount that you have resist code communal on all characters, as the Shadow Demon has code damage on hit, and on unfair, that's going to be doubled. It also has kind of annoying armor class at 33. But thankfully not as many hit points as the Nabasu and Vrock. The worst part is its incorporeal property, which means it takes half damage from basically almost all sources, besides stuff that we don't have at the moment. 
This is why I recommend you leave Finian to one of your heavy hitters, either Scylla or the main character, as Finian possesses the Ghost Touch property even at the start, which means you can bypass Incorporeal with your attacks. So let's have Scylla use Might Evo and activate Judgment with our characters. As the Shadow Demon doesn't have that high will, I'll also try to hit it with Glitter Dust. If it hits, it's going to help a lot. Otherwise, you can just try to cast it again afterwards. I won't be attacking for a Cleric because he'll have to heal, so I might as well turn his Artificial Intelligence off. Even without cold damage, the Shadow Demon can still hit pretty hard if we don't kill it fast enough, as we are on Unfair. <laughs> So currently it is focusing on our horse, who is losing health fast, so I like to heal with my cleric. Unfortunately it made it a save, so let's cast Glitter Dust again. You are going to be missing a lot because of its high AC, sadly it looks like one of our pets can't properly attack the Shadow Demon. This can happen depending on how many pets you have, as we aren't able to ride them yet, but we might as well try to move one of our pets here. Unfortunately it ate an attack of opportunity. Saved again against the Glitter Dust. Let's go for a channel with our Cleric now. It's mostly a matter of time, I mean, eventually it's going to drop down, but without Fortune Hacks, it can be quite luck based. I actually forgot to cast Prayer too. Now it's changed to our main character's dog. Oh, I actually forgot to turn my Rage on. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Got a pretty big hit now. We have to heal again. Yeah, looks like our dog fell. Now we have to focus on Buster. But it's close to death. And there we go. Alright, now let's handle the Succubus. Optional encounter on Unfair. As always, try to disarm the trap first. What's going on here? You can actually head here while the enemies will just stand there. All right. And there we go. So there will be two fighters protecting the succubus, which is at the back. Because of the annoying door making a choke point here, I don't think you can quite charge at them to ambush them outside of battle. What I like to do is first use a death ward scroll on the character you want to initiate the battle, because the succubus can cast energy drain. Second, and this is the most important part. Be sure to cast protection from evil communal, as the succubus can dominate characters, and this will prevent that from hitting you. So since we cannot alpha strike, I already have my dog here to initiate the battle, but you might as well go for a selective grease to try to hit the fighters. Let's leave it somewhere here, near the choke point, and start the battle by doing that. They will break right. Against our resolve. One of them was actually greased, thankfully. Amusingly enough, the one with fire reflex that also has the succubus profane gift failed the save. Good for us. So now let's have our dog with death ward move closer because the succubus will spawn and probably try to dominate and then energy drain it. Of course, the other interested fighter is moving to block our path. He doesn't have that high armor class, at least not compared to the succubus as you are about to see. Yes. Oh, we already got a lucky critical hit from Scylla's horse. And there we go, it basically already exploded. This poor knocked down sod here should get down fast too because of the prone debuff. Unfortunately, because we're being blocked by the annoying door, we're gonna have to move our pet and the other characters too before... Alright, and here's the succubus. She does have <laughs> the most absurd amount of armor class possible, 40. There's really no way you can, I mean, reduce this outside of Evil Eye, which I don't have at the moment. So, the battle against her is mostly going to be luck based, because 40 AC is just too much, even at this point, even with all of the buffs we have, besides Fortune Hacks, of course. We are basically hitting the Succubus on 20s. Right, so she's going for Dominate Person now, I think. It's usually what she does first. The Succubus also has very high will. We'll try to Glitter Dust her, although chances are it won't work. <laughs> so... The poor fighter tries to get up, which procs attacks to opportunity from basically everyone, because we have rich weapons. So now only the succubus is left. But the battle against her is going to be super annoying. Might as well go for the glitter dust now. Remember, with friendly fire effects, you can always move the area of effects, so it will only just slightly hit the enemy, as you prevent it from affecting your own party members. 
Sadly, the succubus is a winged demon, so she's immune to Grease. Well, let's wait for our lucky 20s. The good thing is, if either Scylla or my main character rolls a 20, they'll get a critical hit, which will automatically confirm because of Blessed Weapon, so the succubus will basically lose half her hit points just there. Let's see if Tesna favors us. Oh, she also has Concealment. Something super annoying. Glitter does should help with that. Oh, so the Succubus is actually flat-footed. Oh my god, she got hit with Glitter Dust. Oh man, that's lucky. Like I said, sometimes luck will favor you, so now she'll lose quite a lot of her armor class. <laughs> Still, on the other hand, got a critical miss. Anyways, here's the immunity from protection from evil. But anyways, because of her flat-footed AC, we should get a lot of nice hits going. <laughs> and there we go, she already exploded. All thanks to Glitter Dust. Well, and also the critical hit from Scylla. As I said, it was a 20, which automatically confirmed. Even without Glitter Dust, this would still severely cripple the poor Succubus. Alright, now it wouldn't be a Chapter 1 unfair video without the final battle with Minago, with the amazing Mythic soundtrack as a background music. You might think this battle is an instant win, because of the very powerful Mythic power bonus you have, and that's actually wrong. You can easily die here on hard and especially unfair. The main reason is Minago herself. Well, first she has Absurd Armor Class 52, which even when buffed through Mythic Power is quite a lot. She can hit super hard too with multiple attacks. The key to winning this battle is dealing with her as fast as you can. And here's the thing, the way she's coded, she basically always starts with Waves of Fatigue, which isn't that troublesome. However, Right after that, she often goes for Phantasmal Putrefaction, which will make almost all of your party members sleep. There really is no way to resist this properly, because the disease is going to be super high. So how to handle this, you might ask? Well, it's simple. Crowd control Minago to death as soon as possible. The best way to do this is have one of your casters drop a selective grease on her. This will also knock down basically everyone besides the Vrock. And you have to do it fast before she goes into Phantasma Putrefaction, right at the first round of battle. The good thing is our Mythic Power buff will actually make all enemies automatically fail their saving throws against our spells, so Minago will be knocked down. The same for the other mobs. If you don't use a Selective Grease, well, your own allies will also automatically fall down to your Grease, which basically marks them for death too. So let's have our caster, who thankfully has super high initiative, just for cases like this, drop a Grease right here. Everyone else should basically just rush for Minago. Let's have Scylla Smite her too. And this is also why I have all my pets start at the front of formation, so the demons will focus on them first. And almost everyone else is enlarged with rich weapons for the range. Alright. So we got the Grease just in time before Stunning Screech. That's not really anything you can do against it, you most likely will fail the save, even if you had Shake It Off. Then basically spam heal with whoever has channel energy for you. This is why it's important to knock Minago down fast. Stunning Screech. So you have to do it at the first round. It looks like our Spellcaster actually made a save, so we might as well go for a Glitter Dust now on Minago. The interesting part is, the Brimorax casting Fireball will actually damage all of the demons for you. It's kinda silly. Thankfully, your Mythic buff will actually prevent fire from damaging you. And Stunning Screech is almost done with. We really need to heal. Alright, so we are already attacking, and Minago basically got almost destroyed. All thanks to Glitter Dust making her flat-footed. I mean, you can see it right here, the moment Glitter Dust hits, it's the moment we basically hit her with everything we have because of flat-footed, including Scylla dealing close to 130 critical hit, critical damage. And that's it, the battle is over. How are you doing that? Where is your power coming from? All right, now we might as well do the dreaded large water elemental again on Unfair. I was not going to include it because I already have two videos, both on the Large Water Elemental and also Hosilla on Unfair. But since we are here, why not? 
The Water Elemental not only has super high armor class, very annoying for the early game, but also great attack rolls, damage, and even 5 impenetrable damage reduction. The keys of course pass for tanking, and your pets definitely should have protection from cold and resist cold. I'm pretty sure the game mercifully gives you a potion and a scroll of this at the very start of the dungeon, so be sure to get them before fighting the elemental. Of course being buffed to the max, especially with an large person, and in my case lead blades too, because we need high damage to bypass the water elemental's damage reduction. Now, we definitely have to reduce the water elemental's armor class, so we're going to have Cam use Evil Eye, and then charge with all our characters for the Alpha Strike that will also catch the elemental flat-footed. The way to do it is just as I have explained in my, in my best beginner tips video, have Cam go for Evil Eye, our AC, she's already started casting, as soon as she is about to throw her hand, this is when you charge with your allies. I almost forgot to enlarge Scylla. Then let's charge with everyone. And attack with Lon. So he also gets an Alpha Strike. And there we are. Cam already hit it with Evil Eye. And we are all charging. Well, Cam is based on Evil Eye duty, so this is what she's going to spend forever. The Water Elemental is neutral, so Scylla can even smite it. Let's go. We already dealt a lot of damage from our Alpha Strike because of catching it flat-footed. That's only 17 AC when you combine it with the debuff from Evil Eye. So we have pretty decent chances of hitting it with our Alpha Strike. Cam can actually attack now because the Elemental failed its save against Evil Eye, so it's gonna last forever. Now, if you had someone to cast Grease, this is when you would do it. The Water Elemental is susceptible to it. And if it gets knocked down, it loses its action won't be able to attack you, and we'll also lose a lot of armor class, 4 against melee hits. Now notice because of our protection and resist cold, the elementals freeze ability is not hitting our pets. And it's almost done. It's probably going to kill our dogs if it gets lucky because it has cleave. Hopefully we can overcome it. Hopefully we can defeat it fast. Alright, it's dead. All because of attacks of opportunity. Oh wait! We did trip the elemental. Oh, that's crazy. Look at that. It is not immune to trip. So there you go. This is why dog is so OP. We managed to trip the water elemental even on unfair. This is why we got all of these attacks of opportunities as it tried to get up, which sealed its fate. So yeah, dog is indeed best boy. Now let's handle Hosila, the first story boss on unfair. Now, as far as Hosila stats herself, she doesn't have that high armor class. The same for attack bonus. On the other hand, she can hit super hard with her glaive, which is a rich weapon too, so she can even hit your enlarged characters here at the back. Which is why I prefer to wait until you engage her with your pets. So she targets the pets first. If the pets die, it's not really an issue. Also, her marching terror glaive has a unique property of sending your characters running away in fear of her at the first strike, which on unfair you're probably going to fail the save too, it's kinda annoying. Although you can always use remove fear with Cam to pre-buff or cast it during battle even. Speaking about Cam, she of course has to cast Evil Eye to increase our chances of hitting Hosilla. Everyone else can basically just attack. But remember to send your tanks or pets before your other characters so they don't get hit by Hosilla. Let's have her go for our dogs first. Scylla should also smite her. Right, so she's going to focus on our pets now. It's now safe to attack her with your other allies. Sadly, we didn't get high initiative. So we might as well wait here. We failed on our trip attempt. Hosilla has kinda high CMD. But you know, we just need to roll a 16. I mean, if we get lucky, it can happen. Wendwag is hitting her for us too. Alright, now we can attack her. And Scylla should get her mark soon enough. <laughs> she actually missed against our dog. She has 50% chance of hitting which, well, it's kinda high, but if our dog gets killed, I mean, there's still another one. And we just have to rest afterwards anyways. And there we go. Now we have to handle the Quasits. They are kinda of annoying because they poison on hit, but they don't do that high damage. The problem is, you start a battle all over the place, so one of them is focusing on Wendwag, thankfully. Let's move our other characters to the back here and have our pets engage the Quasits first, because they have way higher AC. Cam is already going to cast Evil Eye on this one. 
Wendlock actually got killed by the Quasit. Okay. Uh, sadly, one of our dogs kind of got blocked here. Okay, so now we should attack. Thankfully, the Quasits have kind of low attack bonus compared to our pet's armor class. I mean, they can still hit on lucky rolls, but it's not going to happen that often. You also absolutely need enlarge and two-handed weapons, because just like the elemental, they have 5 damage reduction, and we don't really have ways of overcoming that so early in the game. One of our dogs fell here, and Scylla is also getting hit by the Quasit. Right, so now we only have one left. You can use Cam to heal with the Wand of Cure Light Wounds. And there we go, the Quasits are done with two. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Chapter 1 on Unfair video. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member. Your support is highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you next time. And if there's enough interest, I'll even post a similar guide, but for Chapter 2 on Unfair instead, with all the bosses and enemies there.